Hello out there. Welcome to our podcast today. This is Coach Eric Johnson, The Brand. This is Coach Aaron Thigpen, The Source. EJ, we've got a brother or sister podcast to our previous one. Uh, you made the cut. Now what? Right. You just did. You guys should check that out. Now, this is our flip side to that, the B side. Yes. So you got cut. Maybe the coach did you a favor. So this is kind of looking at that silver lining and getting cut. Mm -hmm. Or how do you redirect your energies since you didn't make the team for whatever reason, regardless right. of whether it's politics, you weren't good enough, not enough athletes, whatever. Okay. But how do you move on from that? And we've got some thoughts on that. Um, I'll tell a quick story. This is not only a single story, but it's happened over the years. I've seen this happen quite a few times. Okay. Had an athlete, didn't make his varsity team. Very talented mm -hmm. uh, freshman athlete. Told him he wasn't big enough, strong enough, fast enough, but very good ball player. Right. And they wanted to put him on junior varsity team. Mm -hmm. And this kid said, no, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to get bigger, faster, and stronger. Mm. And he did. That baseball season, while everyone else was playing, he went back to work. Fast forward the next year, and he goes back out. Now he's new and improved. Coach wants him to play varsity. And he basically begged him to come back out. Because he, he thought he had lost his opportunity with this kid. Kid just right. said, no, he took it to heart. He says, hey, I got to get better because I want to play varsity ball. I don't mm -hmm. want to play frost softball. And he ended up being the starting shortstop. And furthermore, he went on to receive a D1 scholarship to an East Coast program, Connecticut. And in my opinion, coach did him a favor. Because one... It gave him the time to go back and do what he needed to do was get was get better, at least in the coach's eyes. And it lit another fire underneath him. Mm -hmm. And so he took what most guys, you know, probably maybe wallow in a little bit of self-pity and kind of go down a spiral and don't know what to do. And they kind of just sit around. Some people leave their sport or whatever the case may be. He took that as an opportunity. And I think kids should see being cut as an opportunity. Mm. Mm. I like that, Aaron. I like that a lot because, um, and if you're a player or you're a parent of a player that um, got cut and you're listening to this podcast, um, maybe it's a blessing in disguise because you can go and retool and refine and work on the things that you know you need to work on and maybe you didn't have enough time to get your body or get your mind right and this is a great opportunity you have a full year to get better not like three or four months you have a full year to have the new improved you go out and do your thing. And I think it's important that it can be a blessing if you allow it to, rather than say, I'm not good. What's wrong with me? Why, why didn't I make the team? My friends did. I was better than him. Instead of doing that, go figure out how you can be better, yeah. not only physically, but mentally, and give yourself that opportunity to hone your skills. Um, to seek advice, to maybe get more training than maybe the other players on the team aren't getting who are on the bench and aren't playing. Maybe you excel so much that um, it inspires you to say, hey, I'm going to go get that person's job next year. I think I can do that. Maybe go to the games and watch them play and say, hey, I learned a little bit more about the coaching staff. Go watch a JV game. Go watch a, uh, a, a varsity game. 
get to know the coaches, get to know how they go about the process of that culture there and in that environment. That's a good time for you to seek knowledge. Sometimes when you're involved internally there, you don't see the whole picture. But if you just step outside a little bit, Aaron, and you kind of look at it differently, it can probably guide you in a better direction than where you were. Right. Yeah. And it's funny, you just touched on, I have like four key points that I think athletes should look at from this standpoint. And you touched on it. The first one was, you know, learn from it. Talk with the coach. Find, correct the reasons why you got cut. Find out, you know, what they're looking for so you can be that athlete when you step back on the field next year. You know, the other you talked about is, is reinventing yourself. Again, you know, use that time to show improvement for the next year. That will illustrate to the coach your commitment and resolve and character and, and ability to, to want to be a part of that team. But it gets you ready for prime time. Right. Like we all know high school ball is fun and it's great, but it's not prime time for most athletes. So now think of it this way. You've got four months to get ready for summer where in most cases, that's where you're trying to be seen. So now they freed up your time to do that. To me, it's better to get maximum training time rather than minimum playing time. Ooh, I love that. You know, I love it. In your overall development. Mm -hmm. So this is that time. So find your hitting coach, your pitching coach, whatever, your fielding coach that you can work with. Work on those things, those deficiencies that were pointed out to you. So that way, when the summer comes and you're not just in front of high school coaches, you're in front of the college scouts. You're ready for them. Right. Um, so, you know, those are the things that I think that can be had from having this extra, this extra time. Yeah. You know? Nothing wrong with having a chip on your shoulder too. You know, <laughs> if that puts a chip on your shoulder and it, that fires that fuel for next year, so be it. You know, Aaron, it's funny. As I watch players play and develop and train and stuff, having that chip on your shoulder is not a bad thing. I think a lot of a lot of players I watch right now maybe don't have enough of a chip because things were easy for them, or they were in environments where it just you know you had another game and it was just another game. Now, when your back is against the wall, maybe you appreciate that. I'm going at it 100% or um, I have that chip on the wall that I'm not going to forget how this feeling is because when you get cut, there's a feeling internally that burns you inside. And there's two ways that you can go about it. One, you could feel sorry for yourself and say, "I'm this, this is terrible. I don't want to do this anymore. And the, I got messed up and they, they didn't treat me fairly. Or it's the other side that says, man, this drives me. This gets my competitive juices going and I'm going to do everything in my power to be on that team and to play, not just to be on the team, but to play and show somebody. And that's the me inside of me. I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> putting the me into it, but that should drive you as an athlete. If you're an athlete that, that wants to play, that's, that's got to light the fire under you to to bring out that chip that the, chip is a good thing aaron exactly no that's the true athlete's response as far as i'm concerned i mentioned this in the last podcast there are certain points in your career where you really have to prove when you're an athlete and that's one of the times when you get cut so how you handle that is really going to determine what type of athlete you really are and some of us sometimes have to get to that point where you got to decide how important this is to you. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of people fake the funk <laughs> for a long time, you know, until they're hit with some cold water. And this is when it's gut check time. So you can sit around and let it ruin your season or you can rise above it. 
Yeah. Just that simple. Yeah, that is pretty simple concept. And I think, um, and you and I have seen it. We've had athletes that just put their head down and just start grinding and they became better. Exactly. They have um, kind of like a resurgence, the exactly. resilient, and they figure out that this is the way that I want to continue my athletic career and they won't go back to how they acted before. No, you sport, get, you guys have to understand once you get into competitive sports, it's not recreation. It's not pay to play. It's not okay. But you, you sign the, the, the forms and you're on the team. Right. It's, it's an opportunity to compete and you have to earn that opportunity on a regular basis or you should be. Right. And that's the way you should look at it. For those of you guys who don't know, scholarships now are on a one-year basis. Oh. You have to earn that opportunity to compete every year. No more yeah. free rides, kids. <laughs> it's, you know, and Aaron, I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, and and people can look on us and our other podcasts that we talk about the transfer portal and we talk about, and we talk about in our other podcasts, what it means to be recruiting, what's recruiting about and how you get recruited. So if you're out there listening, hit our other podcast up on that. But, you know, athletes need to understand now is that everyone is competitive. And I don't know a high school athlete anymore, Aaron, that goes in thinking that I've, you know, I can just kind of go through the motions and I'm all right because the competition, there are people that are trying out with them uh, when they, uh, those who made the team, um, they're doing the best they can, or they're going to resources that can allow them to, 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 to make teams. But more importantly, um, when you get cut, you have to understand that maybe the method or system that you have done maybe is not the right way to go about it. And you need to pivot and adjust and understand um, what you need to do to go forward. Couldn't have said it better, pivoting and adjusting. Yes. Aaron, you know, on April 28th at 2 p.m., we have a webinar um, and we're going to be talking about subjects like this or any subjects that people want to hear that you and I, you know, uh, reflect or talk about over, uh, you know, periods of our our 70 years combined experience. So, you know, if people are interested, please hit us up on our direct messaging or DMs, as they say in, in this uh, society now on uh, at Quick Step, which is QCK Step. We want to reach Aaron or hard, our hardball athletics right here, hardball athletics, or hit me up on coach EJ underscore 12, of course, on our Instagram accounts. Please hit us up, Aaron. And uh, with that said, thank you for listening today. We appreciate it. And uh, we want to hear from you. So, so talk to us, please. This is coach EJ, the brand. And to close this subject out with a little ditty. Homeboy, homeboy, what you going to do? What you going to do when the coach cuts you? <laughs> <laughs> right on. I love it. <laughs> this is Aaron Thigpen, the source. We'll see you.